Hey guys, it's Ms. Johnson, and I'm here to bring you our notes for Unit 7, Notes 4, um, which is on z-scores and then finding probability along with that z-score. So that is what we are going to be looking at today. Um, yesterday we talked about finding the calculating the z-score if we weren't given what it was and we learned about this formula where we can find the z-score we can use this to normalize our data onto the normal curve put it in a normal distribution so we're going to be using that formula a lot today but then we're also going to be taking that z-score and putting it back onto the chart the z-score table to find the probability we're looking at so let's take a look at example one. It says in a normal distribution with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of two, find the, prob find the following probabilities for the given X. So we wanna know where X is greater than 13.5. We wanna know what the, prob what the data is where X is greater than 13.5. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to find the Z score for X equaling 13.5. So I'm gonna do that first. So plug that into the z-score formula that we looked at yesterday, 13.5 minus the mean of 10 divided by 2. That gives me 3.5 over 2, which is the same thing as 1.75. So that's my z-score, but now I'm not asked for the z-score here. I'm asked to find the following probability. And whenever you're asked to find the probability, that should tell you that you have to go to the chart. So here's the thing. Remember that when we think back to, um, I think it was lesson two, where we talked about inequalities with this, if I want to know where x is greater than 13.5, that means that I need to find 1 minus the P because if you remember back on that bell curve we have the bell curve and we have this and then whatever the z-score line is say my z-score is there it's measuring the probability underneath so if I want this probability right here I have to take 1 minus that probability which is the P that I'm given in the table so whenever you see greater than that tells you that you need to go 1 minus so if I look at my table and I go to the 1.75 um, 1.75 is right over here, and I'm looking at 0.9599. So my probability there is 0.9599, and the probability that I want is going to be 1 minus that, the probability greater, I should say, which is 0.0401. So that's the probability that's greater than whatever this value is. Let's take a look at part B. So now I want less than, which means all I need to do here is find the probability because that line is measuring the underneath. So I'm good. So this one, Z is equal to 8.2 minus the 10 divided by two. That gives me a Z score of negative 1.8 divided by two, or in other words, negative 0 0.9. So my z-score there is negative 0 0.9 and when I go to my table I look up negative 0 0.9 which is on the front page. Let me see if I can get to my front page here. The negative side, negative 0 0.90 is this one right here, 0 0.1841. Oops, too far. There we go. Um, so my probability is 0.1841. So again, remember when you're looking at this table, the Z scores are the things that are on the outside. The probabilities are the things that are on the inside. So if you're asked to find the probability, you first need to know what the Z score is so that you can get to it. And then you use that Z score on the outside to get to the probability on the inside. So this is, these are kind of two step processes today. All right, so now let's talk about um, number three or part C. So in part C, I want to know what is the data between 9.4 and 9 and 10.6. So this one's interesting because now I have to find the Z for this and the Z for that and I have to subtract the two. So, cause I'm looking for the data between that. I'm looking for the probability of data that exists between. So I'm gonna find the Z score for each of those. So this one is 9.4 minus the 10 divided by two. That one gives me a Z score of negative 0.3 when I use the formula. Over here, I have 10.6 minus 10. Sorry, I ran out of room there. 
divided by 2, and that one gives me a z-score of positive 0 0.3. Oops, 3. So now, find the probabilities that are associated with each of those. So the probability associated with negative 0.30, oops, negative 0 0.30 is down here, it's 0 0.3821, 0 0.3821, and then positive 0 0.30, if I go back down to my positive side there, positive 0 0.30 is up here at the top, 0 0.6179. So 0 0.6179 is this one. And now I need to subtract the two. The probability that I actually want is 0 0.6179 minus 0 0.3821, which gives me 0 0.2. Three five eight. So that's the probability that exists between these two values. All right, let's take a look at our next example. In example two, it says in a normal distribution with a mean of 40 and a standard deviation of 6, find the percentage of scores that are greater than 39 and less than 44. Now, greater than should automatically tell you you have to do 1 minus whatever probability you find because you want to look above the z-score instead of below the z-score. And the z-score that's given to you gives you below. So the first thing I'm going to do is find my z. z is going to be 39 minus 40 divided by a standard deviation of 6. Um, that gives me um, a z-score of negative 0 0.17 when I round it to the hundreds place. And remember, we have to round to the hundreds place here because that's all we have in our z-score table. So the probability associated with negative 0.17, if you go to your chart, negative 0.17 is on the negative side. Here's my bar, here it is. So negative 0.17 is way down here and way out there. 4325 is what I'm looking at. So if I go back, I have a probability of 0.4325. And I need to take one minus that, so one minus. 0.4325 is equal to 0 0.5675. That's my probability that's above the line, above the line for 39. By the way, this table that I keep flipping to, this isn't just a copy. This is just the PDF of the blue table that you guys got um, in the first day of this unit. So you can pull that out and follow along with me so you can see where I'm finding all these values. All right, let's do the less than. Less than is just the probability, so that's helpful. Let's start with the z-score. Finding the z-score, I need 44 minus the 40 divided by 6. That gives me 4 divided by 6, or in other words, 2 thirds, which is about 0.67. So now I just need to go to the table and go to the positive side for find 0 0.67. 0 0.67 is... There's the 0.6, go all the way out to 7, and I'm at 0.7486. So my probability here is 0 0.7486. All right, let's take a look at example 3. In a normal distribution with a mean of 40 and a standard deviation of 6, find the percentages of scores that are between 35 and 48. So now I'm looking between these two. So that means I need a Z for both. Start with that. And then I need to find the probabilities for both and subtract. So 35 minus 40 divided by 6, that one gives me a z-score of negative 0.83 once I type that into my calculator. And again, you can try typing this into your calculator along with me to make sure that you're entering it the right way and getting the right answer. Remember that if you're going to type it all in at once, you need to have parentheses around the stuff on the top. Otherwise, it won't calculate correctly. So this one gives me a z-score of 1.33. Then finding the probabilities for both. So I went to my table and I find the probabilities for both. This one is 0 0.2033. This one is 0 0.9082. Subtracting those, 0 0.9082 minus 0 0.2033, I get a probability of 0 0.7049. There. So that's what's between those two. Now let's look at what's between 32 and 39. So again, I need to start with the z-scores. So I need the z-scores for both. Here z is 32 minus 40 over 6. That gives me a z-score of 
negative 1.33. This one, z is 39 minus 40 over 6. These are both negative here. That's a negative 1 over 6, which is negative 0 0.17. Now take those to your table and find the probabilities of both. So the probability of this one is um, 0 0.0918. And the probability of this one is 0.4325. We found that one in another example. So subtracting the two, 0.4325 minus 0.0918, I get a probability of 0 0.3407. So the betweens are when you have to find z's for both, find probabilities for both, and then subtract. In the next one, it says, suppose, um, suppose that college faculty with the rank of professor at two-year institutions earn an average of $65,800 per year and with a standard deviation of $4,000. So what percentage of professors make more than, that's a clue for you, $67,000? If you want more than, that means you want the right side of the curve. Right side of the curve means I have to take 1 minus P. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the z-score so that I can normalize it to my normal curve. Here's the data, 67,000. Subtract the average, 65,800, that's my mean, divided by the standard deviation of 4,000. So then I end up with a z-score that's 1,200 over 4,000. And my z is going to be um, 0.3. 0.3. So 1,200 12, divided by 4,000 gives me 0.3 for a z-score. Now find the probability for 0.3. So the probability for 0.3, it gave me 0.6179. And I need to take 1 minus that to get the greater than part. So 1 minus 0.6179 gives me 0.3821. Or in other words, if you're talking in terms of percent, that's about 38%. So 38% make above the mean. So again, find the z-score first, normalize it to the curve, find the probability. And because I wanted greater than there, I had to take one minus that probability. Number five, a hot dog manufacturer asserts that its hot dog has an average fat content of 18 grams per hot dog with a standard deviation of one gram. What is the probability that a randomly selected hot dog is more than 18.4 grams of fat? Again, you're doing more than. So again, you know you want one minus P. So start with your Z-score because you don't have it on the normal curve yet. So I got to take my data, 18.4, subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation of one. So that's the same thing as 0 0.4 divided by 1, which is just 0 0.4. So when I look at the probability chart for 0 0.4, my probability is equal to um, 0.6554. Taking 1 minus that to get the greater than piece, because this is measuring underneath. So I take 1 minus that to get what's measuring above. I have 0 0.0 or sorry, 0 0.3446. All right, a couple more left that we're going to look at here. The length of time needed to complete a certain test is normally distributed with a mean of 60 minutes and a standard deviation of 10 minutes. What is the relative frequency of people who take between 45 and 65 minutes to complete the test. Relative frequency tells you that you want how often does this happen, or in other words, what's the probability? Now, anytime you have the, the word between, that tells you you have to find both and subtract. So the first thing I have to do is find the z-score for both. So you can start with either one. It doesn't matter which one you start with. you got to find both anyways. So z is equal to, if I do the 45, 45 minus 60 divided by the standard deviation of 10. That's negative 15 over 10, which is negative 1.5. The other z-score, 65 minus 60 over 10. That's a positive 5 over 10 which is a positive 0 
Now going to the table, I would flip over to my table. Remember, you can be looking at your blue table and I'd find the probability in for both of those z-scores. So the probability for negative 1.5, p is equal to 0 0.0668. The probability for point, positive 0.5 is 0 0.6915. So the probability between them is 0.6915 minus 0 0.0668, which is 0.6247. By the way, notice that I'm always taking the bigger value minus the smaller value. You have to do it that way because probability has to be positive between 0 and 1. You can't take smaller minus the biggest. It doesn't make sense to have a negative probability. All right, one last example that we're going to do together, and then we'll be all set. So example seven, replacement times for CD players are normally distributed with a mean of 7.1 years and a standard deviation of 1.4 years. Find the replacement time separating the top 40% from the bottom 60%. So this is one of those tricky questions that makes it seem like you have to find two different things, but you're not. You're separating the top 40 from the bottom 60. So if I think of my normal curve, I want to know top 40 from bottom 60. So here's 40, here's 60. That means that I'm looking at a probability of 0 0.6000, okay? So that's the probability that I want because remember, your z-score measures what's underneath. So the probability is 0.6. Now here's the funny part. You have the probability, you need the z-score. Okay, you need to know what the z-score is. So you need to go to your table and you need to kind of work backwards. You need to look in your table to find the closest thing to 0 0.6000 that you can to give yourself the z-score that you want. So if I'm, I'm on the positive side of the table, which gives me probabilities above 50%, that's what I'm looking for, I'm looking for 60. I see 0.5987 and I see 0 0.6026. This is 26 10 thousandths away, this is 13 10 thousandths away. So my z-score that's closer is 0.25. That's the z that I want to work with. So your z here is 0 0.25. Now you can plug it into the equation divided by standard deviation. You know the z. So if I plug in the z of 0 0.25, don't plug in the probability. Probability is not in this equation. Z-score is in this equation. So take your z-score, plug it in. You're looking for, find the replacement time. So you're looking for x. You know your mean is 7.1. You know your standard deviation is 1.4. And now use your algebra skills to work backwards. Multiply by 1.4. 1.4 times 0.25 gives me 0 0.35, and then add your 7.1. 7.1, 7 7.1 plus 0 0.35 is 7.45, that's equal to x. So you're looking at, this is in years, 7.45 years. So this was kind of a tricky question. We were given the probability that we wanted. We had to find the z-score closest to it. Then we had to plug that z-score into the formula that we knew to find the x that was missing. Whew, that had a lot going on. All right, so that's the end of our video for today. Thanks for listening, and I will see you next time.